This is the Realty Classroom Podcast, episode number 109, The One-Two Punch, Conversations and Prospect Lists. Are you a real estate agent with an entrepreneurial spirit who wants to turn your job into a business without sacrificing your lifestyle, but you just can't seem to find the right plan to help you get there? Well, then, hey, you're definitely in the right place. I'm Danny Griffin, the founder of The Realty Classroom and the host of this podcast. Now, to help you take um, immediate action in a better direction if you're already in the business or the right direction if you're new to the business, I've created a free jumpstart course for you that's waiting over at freeagentgift.com. Over there, you're going to get a nice download that'll show you the business and how it really should be run or how it should be run strategically in one page, an infographic. And then I walk through each stage in a PowerPoint presentation. It's waiting for you. Just go get it. Okay. Freeagentgift.com. All right. Let me talk about this here today. The one, two punch conversations and prospect lists in my coaching program over the past several months and in my own business, I have really been hyper-focused on trying to chunk up the singularly most important money-making activities. This is a business. We need to understand what activities are nonsense or secondary and which are primary and money-making because you have to learn how this business really works and you have to learn the, the things to do with your time to make that money. So a lot of you ask me about time management. What would you do with your time? Well, this whole podcast, my whole coaching program is about that endeavor to stay focused on those things. Now, conversations and prospect lists are something at the mastermind level we are obsessed with talking about and getting this right. So let me get to the points here. The first point is you have to recognize the reason for this conversation to begin with is you must in a business, learn how to do business with people that you don't know. Now, I know a lot of you referral agents are out there and you're obsessed with that one piece of it. And I'm only by referral and all those things. Okay, great. I'm not arguing with anybody that teaches by referral only. I know that there are several guys that are super popular out there and they do a great job and they teach a lot around that. But I am more interested in having you understand that I believe that you must be able to learn how to go directly to consumers that you don't know. Why do we always have to have somebody in the middle? Why does there have to be a referral source to begin with? I understand some referral sources mean agent to agent. Well, those are expensive. I mean, if we're paying uh, each other a big percentage referral fee, there goes a big percentage of margin. I'm not saying I don't love it when some agent refers me somebody. It's wonderful. It's part of the business, but it is a lower margin piece of business when it comes in because I have to give up an enormous chunk. Now, perhaps you could argue that that lead capture and that lead conversion cost is not really there, but you all know there's still a lot of work to be done. So, I would be cautious of trying to build an agent to agent only referral business. The next thing for referral business is that if you are always marketing to professionals, let's just say you have um, closing attorneys, you have title companies, you have uh, whatever else. I mean, let's just leave it at that. Okay. That you're trying to stay in front of these other professionals so that their network can be referred to you. Well, that's great too. So, so far, I like both of these pieces of the business and that's why I want to go there first. I want to deal with this because otherwise you're just going to dismiss me and we get this to get this weird juxtaposition of the new business generators, the lead gen gang, and then the referral gang, right? It's only two gangs. They're both parts of the business, okay? So, you have to recognize that you're waiting for other people to refer you business. I, I know you're marketing to them. You're staying in front of them and you're networking and you're stopping by and all that stuff. All good practices, okay? All good. But what I'm talking about is, think about, I always use this example, Think about a major business like Schultz when he started Starbucks in the corner somewhere in Seattle. I mean, did he really think that he was going to hope that all his friends and family would be the ones that came and then just referred their friends and family and that's how he'd grow that business? Of course not. So I'm just trying to hit you with the logic hammer that like Starbucks coffee, always trying to get new clients, that's us too. 
That's what business is about. So in our unique world that we have, sure, we can work and be intentional about getting referred business to. I think it's great, but I think it's more that past client repeat and referred business and those professionals. That's a, that's a, you have to go through somebody else to get your business. This is consumer facing. Okay. Let me just, I'm sorry. I had to indulge you in that because a lot of you will dismiss me. And I don't want you to do that. Some of my own clients, I had to argue this point, and then they got the balance. They understood it, right? And that's why I see things in modules. That's why I say go to freeagentgift.com and get a copy. You'll see this past client module with his repeat and referred business from past clients that we're very intentional about. But it's at the end of the production line that helps us accelerate and, and repeat, right? And of course, over time, that really helps. But I always want you to be ready to be able to do business with people that you don't know for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is to be able to go into areas where you really would love to do some business and get better higher end business, meaning from the median price and above in your target market. That's why. Okay. That's a big why. So that's the first point here. The second point here is that conversations are the cornerstone of any type of new business. And so I scratch my head when I think, why were we all so confused about time management when the very first thing that we should be measuring each week is how many conversations did we have about buying and selling property with the consumers? Think about that. I mean, if you want to track anything, and especially if you knew scratching your head, well, what do I do? You start having conversations about real estate. And when you start having conversations about real estate, people start to engage you about real estate on a regular basis. And one of the greatest things we have available to us today, and I've said this in previous podcasts, is social media and social media platforms. This keyword engagement to go out to your social media channels, to go out physically to events networking events, all of these things. These are opportunities to have conversations about real estate in general. How's the market? Glad you asked. You know, funny thing. Now you just go down the statistics and you talk about it and that's why you want to be prepared to answer how's the market within which you'd like to do business. If you don't on a monthly basis keep up to date with those statistics, shame on you. That's number one because you need to be prepared to be the professional at least with that little chunk of information every single month. The general direction of the market. We are professionals in a very, very big financial transaction business. So you want to be able to talk some of the statistics. Average days on market, average price per square foot, all the things that people love to talk about, whether or not that's really the key point or key points that we use when buying or helping somebody buy or sell property. It's just how it starts. Then you deeper dive into tips on how to sell right, how to buy right. You know, all those things follow, but those are all your opportunities for conversations. So that's the key there because if you don't really think about every week, did I or did I not have conversations, you're nowhere. Now you're really reactive. So see, I guess maybe I should have said that in that first bullet point. There's a difference between being reactive and proactive. Don't get me wrong. I think the best at referrals and the, co the coaches and guides that are out there that focus on referrals, they teach their gang how to be proactive in going to get people and do certain things to get people to refer them. They're proactive. You don't know a top producer that focuses on any type of business in this industry that isn't proactive to a large extent. Some people have such a big book of business. Their proactivity is just dealing with the stuff that keeps coming through, but you have to be proactive. Especially if you're new, newer, looking to jumpstart an already existing business and you're scratching your head, how many conversations did you have today, Monday through Friday, Monday through Sunday, whatever it is that you're doing this, and are you cognizant of when it's happening? Do you initiate them? Social media wise, live broadcasts, all of these things that are just phenomenally available to us. Did you start conversations about the business, okay, and how it's, how it's doing in your locality. Next, next point here is when you have these conversations, you have to really be ready to make an offer 
for those people that you're conversing with that do have some contacts to potentially sell or buy inside the next 12 months. I'll bracket it for you inside the next 12 months because most of you won't have sophisticated follow-up systems that allow you to have really long-term follow-up, nor do I recommend it for even top producers until they're really good at dealing with people that are going to do something inside of six months, 12 months max, right? That's how you want to build your systems. How well do you deal with helping people and what offer do you have if they have a real reason to buy or sell a property inside the next 12 months? Let me go back over that again because this is really a key point in this podcast. You have to have these good service offers to create for yourself and your business the best quality prospects. Let me get into this now. This is the real nuts and bolts that we do. And by the way, I'll, I'll mention at the end of the podcast, as I do every time, we give away an eavesdrop into our live sales training call so you can actually hear the technique and tactic being used to make a good service offer and how we do that very specifically. It's not just a what to do podcast here. We also give away some real how to do stuff without me in a formal way. So if you just would copy that and test it, you're going to see that a good offer does make a big difference when you're talking to people who are serious. Now, remember what act that is. A lot of you hear the word prospecting and you freak out. Because you think that, oh, that's cold calling. I'm an article. I'm not cold, 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 cold. <laughs> right? That's what it sounds like when somebody gets all defensive. Because a lot of people like to cold call and a lot of people don't. I don't even like the word, the term cold calling. So I'm going to get away from that. Now, there are times where we pick up the phone. Well, there's a lot of times where we pick up the phone in my office and we have an outbound call. But it's a service call. Let that sink in. It's not a cold call. We don't pick up. I think it's barbaric to pick up the phone and start muscling your way through a conversation and even to the point where you're insulting somebody on the other end, almost bullying them to do business with you. I don't like that. God bless you if it works for you. I hope you're really genuinely treating the people well, but I don't vibe with that. I am a service-oriented thinker, and I believe that's the most powerful way to do it. I believe in the golden rule. I want to treat them the way I would want to be treated, and it's a very viable business approach, very viable. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, that didn't work. Yes, it does. So the point is, if I can make a good service offer, and in this digital age, it's never been emphasized or or highlighted as much as it is that you must be willing to give away some of your best stuff for free. That is the ultimate servant's mentality to be able to show them. And by the way, the subtlety there is you're really most of the time just giving away what to do. Like I do in this podcast, this is my best stuff for free. This comes live off of a real high-end coach. When I say high-end, the, the, the people are top producers. They've been in the business for years and they're working to build businesses and trying to chunk this up to make it easier, not more complex. So all of the stuff I give you is what to do. Now, how to do it, of course, takes guidance. That's why I get paid in the capacity as coach when somebody wants to go deeper and wants how to do guidance. This is very similar to what you will do with buyers and sellers. It's not very similar. It's exactly the same, right? Watch. If I pick up the phone and I can identify in my geographic target market somebody who has context to sell like an expired, like a probate situation, like a for sale by owner, or maybe I had inbound leads for home evaluation or sold homes around them, whatever. Okay. There's a whole bunch of different contexts that could exist and I could have gotten them multiply, uh, multiple different ways, but I have to know what to say when I follow up that says, Hey, this is what I have for you given your context. That's the conversation. And that's what takes the pressure off of this concept of cold calling. See, cold calling puts you in this weird defensive mindset where now all of a sudden you're bragging about your company, you're bragging about your resume, you're bragging, you're bragging, you're bragging, me, 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 me. And the next thing you know, it feels like an enormous amount of blood, sweat, and tears because it is. 
because it's not serving. It's not about somebody else. It's about, I'll border on saying it's manipulative to get what we want, right? Let that sink in. It borders on manipulative to get what we want. Now, again, you might say, well, you're doing the same thing. You're trying to just get in there with this service-oriented thing and manipulate them to do business with you. Yeah, probably manipulation is a bad word, but I am just going to make it obvious to somebody that I have a great service offer that I'm willing to give them for free. Now, that might be a physical productization of my guidance. It might be longer-term follow-up where we give them access to MLS and our insights and just we curate the information for them. Those are examples of things that will comprise this offer, right? So you want to make sure that's there. But if you understand the reason for all of this, it's the second part of this podcast today. You are in the act of prospecting for your business. Meaning, and prospects come from a lot of places. I'll go back to that referral business. You know, somebody refers you somebody, you have to make them a service offer. You see what I'm saying? That's why I said, why, why are we always fighting the referral gang versus the front end lead gen gang? I mean, why are we fighting? It's ultimately pouring into the same spot, which is your core offer of service to the buyer and seller. Because most buyers and sellers don't make an immediate decision to, to allow you to have a client relationship with them. Even if you book a, an appointment today on your first call to somebody and you're going out there two, three days later, you're going out there to serve them and have them understand what it is that you do. They might make a decision right then and there if they're ready. If they're not, they might reconsider you. So this is this whole act of prospecting. And if you can see that the, the, the holy grail here or the key golden bar is this relationship that's what this is. It's a relationship between you, the guide, and them, the hero of the story, who might take the journey together. So this act of prospecting, it starts from the very minute that you talk to that contact who is a lead, meaning you just have their contact information, you have no idea about their reason for moving and their timing and motivation for moving. You don't have any idea yet. So why are you getting so fired up about that moment and trying to force it until you know, gee, is this a good prospect for me? And that's the key thing here about the next point. Prospect lists must be micromanaged. I called it before in another podcast, the prospects club. It's your private club of prospects. If you do this right, this is where we start to get into that selfish business protection mode too. Yes, I'm saying on one hand, go try to serve as many people as you can if they have a context and you have the what to do information that could help them. But once you make that offer and it's accepted, that's a good sign that this might be a member of your prospect club soon. But then the next stage is to determine their seriousness of purpose because you're not here, there's not a charity where you're just giving information and you, you'll be friends with these people you know, that you just met on the phone or you just met at an event or whatever it might be. You need to be able to see if it's a viable business opportunity where that viable relationship of guide and hero can come together. So we have the first beat of, here's what it sounds like, okay? Danny, Danny, this is Danny Griffin from Griffin Realty Group. The reason I'm calling is because I saw your beautiful house online and I noticed it didn't sell. So I wanted to send you some information that will help you sell it the next time. May I do that? You see, there's nothing in an introduction like that. Nothing that says me, 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 me. Here's who I am, sure. Here's where I'm from, sure. But I know that you have this situation and I know that I have something, my best stuff for free. It's what to do stuff. And I'd like to send it to you because with or without me, I believe that this would really help you. And I feel almost obligated to get it in your hands. May I do that? Well, for somebody who's serious about selling inside the next 12 months, and again, I, I just use the expired example, but I could use you know, a, an internet home evaluation. Sally? Sally, this is Danny Griffin calling from Griffin Realty Group. The reason I'm calling is I saw that you requested a free evaluation of your property on our website, so I wanted to send that to you. Would it be okay? See, these are rhetorical service-oriented offers, especially if somebody's opted in. And even if it's an outbound call, like an expired FISBO probate, as long as the service offer is something that's in it for them, 
The WIFM, what's in it for me is what they're thinking. And if you really have some material that you can send, send them a pre-listing agreement, send them a pre-buy agreement, whatever it is, have that material ready that would guide them without you. Why? Because that's the law of reciprocity. And now it kicks in even on that first outbound phone call when now they're like, yep, sounds good. Wonderful. I appreciate that. Um, Great. Could I confirm the address is this? Yes, it is. Wonderful. I'll I'll call you next week to make sure you get it. Not, oh, may I call you? No, you said yes to my package. I want to make sure you get it. It's really good stuff. I want to get it out the door to you. I'll call you next week. Good. Hey, by the way, while I have you, now we can get into, because we've earned it correctly. We've earned relationship. There's no cold calling and pounding. And not everybody wants the package. No, I'm all set. Thank you. I've relisted with the other agent. No, I, I was just curious. I don't want you to go out of your way. Well, by the way, why were you asking? Was there a real reason to move in the next 12 months? No, not really. See, that's okay. All that's okay. Those conversations that you're having in volume identify the person who wants your information and guidance early on because they have a real reason. And that's the, oh, by the way, moment in my world is, oh, by the way, why were you thinking about selling this beautiful house? Shut up. Let them answer. They give you a real reason. You're like, "Mm, that's a real reason. On a scale of one to 10, how motivated are you to do that inside the next 12 months? I'm a 10. Now you go on to the next beat, right? So you see, now they can come into the prospect list the minute they accept some sort of a relationship of follow-up. And the prospect list is the more they lean in with you and the more their timing is now, now we take that list and we micromanage the heck out of it to say, all right, well, some of these folks I talked to were definitely in 12 months, but they were definitely more like the nine to 12 month bracket. And then the others, my top 20 that I'm looking for all the time, those people are very serious about doing something in the next 60 days. And I really need to doubly serve them. So now not only do I have this prospect list, and by the way, a prospect list, don't just get yeses, but that are casual. Qualify. Is this something that's worth your time and theirs to follow up? Are they willing to accept things like you putting them in MLS to get solds around them while they're trying to get their house ready with your guidance from afar without even being in there yet? Qualify and protect that list, right? I think that's the most important thing to remember here is the final point. If you will just simply protect this list, print it out, look at it. If you don't know the names by heart to some extent, this is why you don't need 3,000 people on your prospect list. That's not a prospect list. Top 20, always turning over a couple, two, three, four every month, whatever it is that you're after, right? Individually, that's enough. As long as new people are coming in, you're graduating some to clients and some their circumstances change and you kick them out, that's the way that this works, okay? So let me let me go back and hit this again. The points here about the one-two punch of conversations and prospect lists start with one, you have to realize that you have to do business with people that you don't know, okay? And it's best if that includes going straight to the consumer. Next, conversations are the cornerstone of your new business. Track your conversations about real estate every week. If you're not having them, Houston, you have a problem. Next, good service offers need to be ready so that when you make these outbound calls to people, you can make a good service offer where people are ingratiated and then you get the real chance to see if you can create a true prospect relationship where they will allow you to serve them and they won't be cheating on you. Okay, next, The prospect list must be micromanaged. And finally, you want to print it out and know it so that you know where your top 20 are and who's most likely to become your next client. All right, let me say it this way. The key to developing a consistent flow of new business is to focus on conversations that offer quality, right? Quality service that leads to great prospect relationships. All right. Now, remember, let me come back to this. You can get a copy of our free simple business plan waiting for you over freeagentgift.com so that it gives context to how to apply everything I talk about in these individual episodes. Okay. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen so that you don't miss out on any insights each time we upload an episode. We also broadcast live. I told you this before, our sales training giveaway on Facebook and YouTube every Friday at one o'clock. Remember, 
to turn on your page and channel notifications so that you don't miss and subscribe. Subscribe, like, that's how you get notified, right? Turn on those notifications. We'd also appreciate it if you would share this content with others as well. That's important. Now, another thing that I'm starting to do, and you can find it at therealtyclassroom.com, is we're taking the notes on all of this stuff, and for two weeks, we're leaving them up there. Then we're moving them over into what is going to be a brand new entry-level membership at the TRC where there is a formal printed newsletter that we're about to draft for the very first time. So you want to keep your eyes open for that. And I think my landing page is ready for that. So if you see the realtyclassroom.com, you go over to the podcast page, there'll be a pop-up. You can get the free stuff and then there'll be an offer there that you can see that we have a new membership that we're going to open up so we can get a little bit more formal with a lot more of you so that we're not just giving this good stuff away way on the how to do it to our mastermind. All right. Hey, thanks. Remember, nobody's coming for you. So go get to work on your own business and I'll see you in the next episode.